Hey everybody, you are tuned into the Freemat podcast. I am the one and only Matt Freemat. I am usually joined by General Patrick Flynn. Together, we are a, eh, call it a libertarian roundtable discussion, combining uh, some facts, some some articles, some quotes, plus some stupid social commentary and enjoyable banter. We are usually the Free Mad Podcast. Ooh, today, today, today. Uh, didn't have all my notes. We're going to go off the notes I do have. I had some inconvenient questions for you. This does take critical thinking skills, so a handful of you Chaunceys might get triggered. All right, here's some inconvenient questions about Bill Cosby. All right, if you have if you have been living under a rock, you find out that a 84 year old man named Bill Cosby was released from prison. Not only did his conviction was overthrow, they found out he wasn't supposed to be in court to begin with. Now it hurts a lot of your feelings, especially the Me Too crowd, that somebody as detestable as this could be set free because of something like this. Question number one. Do you like the idea of innocent people going to jail? Now, I know a handful of us, some of us don't have a problem with it, and they would rather lean on the side of locking up innocent people just to make sure the guilty didn't slide out. Here's the weird thing. All right, here's the second thing. Here's my second question, if you haven't figured that out. Was there a chance that Bill Cosby wasn't guilty? I don't know. But I will tell you this much. When you parade people to testify against someone... It's hard to determine who's telling the truth and who's lying. And you ask me, but, 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 Matt, didn't these people, they testified, they swore up and down. All right, folks. You know what? The irony is, he was guilty in the eye of public opinion. He wasn't guilty because of facts or real evidence. He had testimony going against him. Another question for you. Is there a chance that all of these people were lying about him committing a crime? My answer, there was a there was a, a chance that all those people were telling the truth about something else. And you ask, you're like, aren't you obfuscating evidence of the crime, of his crimes? The evidence put forward pointed towards the fact that these people were probably either taking drugs knowingly or they knew that he was giving them drugs. I don't like it. I think it pointed to him being a creep and some asshole who couldn't get laid if he wasn't drugging women. But the women knew about it, and a lot of the women continued on a relationship, and I use a quotation, relationship, with one Bill Cosby. I never said it was right. I never said it was healthy. All right. My other question is, can you get truth by, was it consensus or census, like a count? I have 30 people testify against me. They saw me at the ATM flashing my junk. Am I automatically guilty of indecent exposure? According to to. The, the public opinion, yes. They put me on TV. They made the pictures of me looking like a, a mo. They have people, uh, eyewitness testimony, you know, months before I get into the docket. And, yeah, 
I'm, I'm, my goose is cooked, part of the expression. And the weird thing is, I just found 30, somebody found 30 people who didn't like me, who was part of a flash mob or on Craigslist who said, hey, he's a creep. He looks like a creep. I saw him diddling his junk at the ATM. And I was going to say, just because 30 people say it's true does not mean it's true. And it doesn't automatically mean that the people were lying or telling the truth. And I've said that about expert, not non-expert testimony, testimony of people in courts, that they told the best version of the truth that they knew. And quite often, it didn't include, it was their perception of what happened. I saw a purple bird with yellow spots knock over a brown lamp. Okay, what they actually saw was a lamp fall down next to a picture of a purple bird with yellow spots. And here's the thing. We, we all right, we'll, we'll skip over to our next question here. Don't, do you think that these people had pure intentions of testifying? In the second part of that, another question. Do you think any of these people had benefit to testifying and, and, and speaking up to what they thought was wrong outside of doing justice. Here's my answer for all of those two questions. In our current time and day, people, and I said people, they're empowered. They're not only, they're only empowered to come forward, not out of a sense of justice or a sense of a sense of duty of doing what's right, but out of victim identity, uh, notoriety, or a possible gain out of notoriety in certain communities, having, and yes, in even the third one, the attention and sympathy of many people, including to those with identity disorders, people that give into the victim identity, and people looking for notoriety and sympathy, and people like a level of sympathy. But unhealthy people can latch on, and there are plenty of people that were involved with this case that levied accusations that benefit, especially in their backgrounds, benefit from the victim identity, and they had a hook, they had a reason to do this. And yes, there was mentally ill people, there were people that were drug addicts. There was people that were party animals. There were people that were washed up in the system, and they were looking to looking for their last hurrah. I'm not saying one of those people might have been telling the truth, but the thing is, when you let people dogpile in, you're going to attract some crap, and sometimes that crap will come and bite you in the rear end. And you know what? Uh, I'll give you an example. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, when he was cheating on his now ex-wife, and he had the phone call, like, quit calling me, don't call here again. They made a song about it. You know, he messed around with the porn star. He messed around with the Rachel Yucatel. Uh, there was a couple other women. Uh, not, not, you know, disqualifying these people because of their backgrounds or whatever. But I'm going to tell you that by the time the 8th and ninth person rolled around, you had every freeloader that shook his hand and every starlet or burnout uh, club girl saying that they messed around with him. And they piled on and they wanted notoriety. They wanted their names mentioned in the, in the news so they could go and get uh, make, make more followers on Instagram and sell some, sell some advertising. And you know what? I'm sorry. You, I know that rape is a sense of subject and I'm, I know it's going to hurt me for even mentioning it, but it is a serious subject, but I'm not. All right. Let me level with you. There's plenty of people that are capable of accusing other people of doing something that didn't happen. 
It doesn't even have to be that. It could, I've accused people of stealing things from me and found out that they didn't. And you know what? People get mad or people want to raise alarm. They'll do things like that. And yeah, there's a, there's a handful of people that were around Bill Cosby that did exactly that. And these are people that hung on, they're hanger, hangers on, they're people that spent a lot of time around them. They weren't pure of heart, they're people that are party animals. And it was just easier to cause the, you know, ring the alarm, cause, cause attention to be drawn, and trying to figure out what happened. And the weird thing is that some of them might have been telling the truth, some might have been telling what they observed in, in the observation or their accusation was wrong. And some people just outwardly wanted attention or wanted a, a sense of identity through the victim lens. And that's something I think you guys need to be aware of. Ask yourself those questions the next time you see something on TV. You see some court case or some, ske some skeezy looking guy. And the weird thing is there's people who get put in jail because they don't have any money. They end up looking like crap. And, I mean, all you have to do is talk a bunch of soccer moms and the kind of idiots that go to, uh, the kind of idiots that go to, uh, jury duty and find out that they got slammed because, oh, he looks guilty, he looks like a skeezer, he's got to be guilty. Like, oh, he couldn't have done this. Or he could have done that. I'm not saying you need to throw people away who testify, but I've seen plenty of cases, including local ones, where... The people testifying were full of crap, and nobody could be believed, and it had to be thrown out. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of those women, the testimony I heard, you, you, you're talking about a tough nut right there. And in the long run, if people, the jury members stayed awake long enough, they figured it out themselves. So ask yourself these, these inconvenient questions. The next time this kind of crap happens, like what happened with Johnny Depp, Bill Cosby, I'm not saying either one of them are uh, innocent or guilty, or not guilty or innocent. But these are things you got to think about. All right, hit notifications. There should be a like over there. Uh, subscribe. What would it hurt you? Ooh, my uh, website down there. Usually leave a website. You can go check it out. Go read something. Leave a comment. Ooh, further down, you have uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. hate email. Send me an email if you like or dislike, even if you dislike. Ooh, Twitter and Gab. Uh, leave a comment on the uh, bottom comment section and uh, tell us how, how, how you liked it or dis disliked it. I do appreciate your comments as long as they're done in uh, decent faith. I try to leave them on there and hopefully, but YouTube's, uh, YouTube's uh, algorithm or their, their uh, comment uh the the people who clean things up they kind of hit a lot of your messages but i usually leave them on there as long as they're not spammy all right i hope you have a good one take care of yourself